morning, everybody. I'm Barry Whaley, Director of Solutions Engineering here at Cashfly. And I'm joined today by Matt Levine, who is our founder and CTO. A lot of people may not know, but Cashfly has been operating in a couple different forms. Uh, but the, the current iteration, 18 years of doing this, and that's, uh, that's quite an accomplishment, especially in a tech space that moves so fast. You've seen a lot of other CDNs and networking companies come and go. Um, I mean, that's just really impressive for a technology space. Um, so I want to give you a chance to kind of talk about yourself and how Cashfly came to be and, and kind of what you think led to having success for such a long period of time. Well, uh, it came to be I, like any good thing. I stole it. So uh, I had some friends, uh, some friends from Arizona who started a CDN. Oh, uh, and uh, they, they kind of pitched me on being a, an early employee. I think I would have been very low single digits. And um, I didn't love the approach that they were going with to build the CDN. But at the same time, so this was in 2002. So Akamai had just acquired Speed Era. So there was a little bit of a vacuum in the marketplace and definitely room for, for innovation. And I just had been playing with the idea of doing stuff over any cast. Um, and it just kind of became a need meets opportunity thing. I needed a, or an application for it. And there was this opportunity in the marketplace. And I think it offended me on some visceral level that I'm just coming to grips with that like you could only have at the time have bought from one vendor, really. Right. Um, and how could that one huge vendor really service the whole market? Like sh surely somebody that big can't do a great job for everybody. And I've always been of the opinion that like a small team with really awesome tech working together really well can do really big things for the right subset of customers that appreciate that. You have the, you know, you have a certain slice of the world that will only ever do, you know, buy phone services from AT&T yeah. and it doesn't, doesn't matter what else you do. Um, but objectively, when you look at AT&T and you go, wow, AT&T doesn't provide the best customer service. They don't provide the best services. Like there, there's, there's something about a monopoly that, that just gets at me a little bit, Rub, especially rubs the wrong way. rubs me the wrong way. Um, and so I think that was a, a large part of it at the time is, is cause it, there was lots of things I could have done in that um, with, with any cast at the time. And it, it just, there was something about it where I was like, people should have a choice. People should have a way to do this. And so that kind of led to the first iteration of the, of the platform, which was, you know, it was the only CDN at the time in history, first CDN ever, uh, where you could sign up with a credit card and, 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 you know, fill out two forms and you'd have a CDN account globally. That wasn't a thing in 2005. We take it for granted today um, that pay as you go, you know, is a thing that all the cloud providers do. But 15 years ago, it was definitely, definitely outside the box. And um, it, allowed, um, it allowed us to get a lot of people into CDN that otherwise wouldn't have. So way back then, uh, you know, CDN was competing with um, shared hosting uh, for a lot of people's accounts. So it was a very different world than, than today where, where you can terraform any of 128 cloud services, one of which is, is CDN. And at the same time, you know, we, we had a lot of customers grow with us. Uh, we, have, we have a couple of customers that have been with us since, since day one. They're, I think, past their 15-year anniversary now. And, you know, as you mentioned, the, the industry has changed a little bit. We've had some new players uh, come into the industry that, that uh, I don't think anybody would have seen way, way back when. Um, but at the same time, the, the one thing that probably set us apart from those that have come and gone um, is we, we never took any outside funding never raised any debt, never did any equity. So we've always been bootstrapped, self-funded, grown out of cash flow. And that gives you a certain amount of um, credibility, I think, with customers. And it allows us to be honest when we say we put our customers first. Right. And I think the, the, the sort of compounding effect of that year over year over year over year um, has yielded us a lot of very loyal customers. And uh, we're lucky that we pretty much exclusively grow by word of mouth. And that's been, that's kind of been the story of the business is, um, you know, we put our customers first. We don't, they don't come second to bondholders or right. preferred class A well, shareholders or anybody else. I, I was going to jump in and say like, as, as both a customer and a longtime tech and CDN employee, um, being able to work in any tech space without having to worry about quarterly reports, 
is a huge relief off your shoulders, right? There's when you when you know that when our customers know that Cashfly isn't doing isn't pushing some crap out just because we need to make earnings um, for this quarter, and as an employee knowing that we don't have to put out subpar work. Um, because we're, you know, again, having to make those quarterlies or, you know, the end of year reports coming out. Um, I mean, that, that absolutely plays a huge role in just making sure that you're getting well thought out tech and not just quick to market tech. Yeah. And uh, I mean, CDN has is, is been a fairly unique industry in that almost nobody has ever made money doing it. Um, but, some, but some try harder than others. Um, but that still leads. So the, the one thing I never want with any of my vendors is to be asking myself, am I the customer who's, who they're losing money on? Or am, I the, or am I the sucker who they're, you know, overcharging to make up for the other one who's a better negotiator? Um, our customers don't really have that problem. We don't do a deal if it doesn't make sense for us. And as part of that, you know, we've, I think we've probably turned away three or four times more deals than we've, we've bid on just because they didn't make sense for us. They might've made sense for us if we were, trying to hit some sort of top line revenue growth so that we could get our next tranche of venture capital and keep the lights on. Uh, the reality is we rely a hundred percent on our customers to keep the lights on. So every deal that we do needs to make sense because that's what, you know, that's what keeps the team. Um, so it keeps the team employed. That's what keeps the company growing. That's what keeps the, the technology advancing. All of it is built around, you know, providing a superior experience for customers at a fair price. Um, and leveraging that to do even more things that we can, you know, generate an awesome experience for more customers and charge them a fair price. Mm -hmm.